This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Lenovo ThinkPad W550S. S kind of means skinny in Lenovo lingo, so what you're getting here is a mobile workstation that's a lot like the ThinkPad W541, but slim down, lower power CPUs inside, better battery life. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Lenovo ThinkPad W550S, a mobile workstation, 15-inch class. I won't say 15.2. Six, because it depends on what display you get. This is kind of unusual. If you get the full HD 1920 by 1080 model, that is a matte TN display, though I hear it's not a bad TN display as they go, it's 15.6 inches. If you get the 3K display like we have here, then it is 15.5 inches. Probably has to do with supply and technology that's available. We'll talk about the display some more later, which is a nice display, by the way. Looks like a ThinkPad, doesn't it? You got your matte black finish right here, kind of soft touch. It does pick up fingerprint oil some, but it, you know, wash it with a damp cloth. It's a ThinkPad. You can do that. Not a problem. Speaking of washing and things like that, not that you're supposed to hose down your ThinkPad, but if you accidentally spill something on the keyboard, we have keyboard drain holes there. So the idea is you shake it out. Now, if it's something sticky and gooey like a chocolate milkshake, it'll be a problem. But if it's water or something like that, not as much of a problem. There's a removable battery here. You, this is the 72 watt hour six cell battery. This is the higher capacity battery that's available, which obviously tilts the machine up a little bit, sticks out. If you like it flush, you can get the lower capacity battery. And this uses Lenovo's bridge battery system. So there's also an internal three cell battery. It becomes important because this guy is a real energizer bunny, at least for something as big as this. Traditional docking connector right here. So you can use it with the ultra dock for those of you who still like that kind of dock. Lots of ventilation here. We have NVIDIA Quadro dedicated graphics near the K620M. That could require a bit of ventilation cooling, but otherwise we have fifth generation Intel Broadwell ULV 15 watt CPUs. Those are the same CPUs you would see in an Ultrabook. So that makes it an odd pairing, doesn't it? Something as beefy and powerful as a 15 inch workstation, but with ULV lower power CPUs instead of the usual 28 watt CPUs like the quad core i7 that we see in the W541S, the Lenovo, uh, the Dell Precision rather 3800 model. But you know, HP has a ZBook 15U. There, there is a market for these for those of you who need some heavy lifting but not super duper crazy horsepower. And we'll talk about that some more as well. First, let's take a look around our laptop here. Plenty of ports because it's a big guy. Also upgradable internals. We have two USB 3 ports right here. Mini display port 1.2. Ventilation obviously. Your security lock slot. Another USB 3.0 port right here. This is the rectangular charging port. Comes with a 65 watt charger. Combo mic headphone jack right there. We have Ethernet, we have a full-size SD card slot. The card goes nice and far in, so you don't have it sticking out a whole lot. And we also have a legacy VGA port here. Now, those of you who work in the world of business know VGA ports are useful. I know some of you everyday consumers out there are going to snicker at that, but hey, a lot of people in business still need it. Optional is a smart card reader. We have a place here where that could go. And also in the, the name of portability, here is the power adapter, which isn't much bigger than an Ultrabook. Again, a 65 watt charger right here. So not very heavy, not very big, not too much for your bag. In terms of durability, this is your usual ThinkPad, seriously durable machine. No flex, flex no twist. Drop it, probably going to be fine. Magnesium alloy roll cage inside. So it's a sturdy machine besides that spill resistant keyboard. When you open it up, what do you see? Look at the keyboard. It's like nice, right? We review a lot of Ultrabooks. They have keyboards with not much key travel. This guy, even though it's not so very thick, honest to goodness, it has lots of key travel. If you're used to the classic keyboards from a couple of years ago or from larger machines like Lenovo's bigger workstations, or you're gonna love this keyboard. Really nice. It's it's Nice key height, it's got the sculpted keys, everything is normal, and there's another special thing going on here. Trackpad, the top buttons are back again for your pointer stick for those of you who like to use it. And looky, looky, a number pad. Yeah, it's not easy to find on a 15 inch machine, so number crunchers particularly are gonna appreciate that. Power buttons up top, above the display, completely normal keyboard. 
by default, the FN row controls multimedia, your brightness, your volume, all that sort of thing. Trackpad is pretty decent size given the size of the machine. Of course, you could have infinitely huge if you were HP. You'd go crazy and fill the whole thing. No need for that, honestly. It's large, it's predictable, it's the usual good Lenovo Synaptic solution. And of course, there's a fingerprint scanner over here. Though I'm not sure how many people need a display that goes this far back, especially with this nice wide IPS viewing angle here. You can make it completely flat if you want to. This is a matte or anti-glare display. Now obviously it's going to reflect some stuff. It is still made of glass. You can see it picking up some light as we move it around, but generally speaking it is way less glary than your usual glossy display. It does have that kind of matte coating look to it. When you look at it you can see a little bit of graininess on text. Uh, the colors don't maybe look as sharp and vivid as they would on a glossy display, but in the end, it makes photo editing a lot easier for those of you who are doing that. It's less tiring on the eyes, so we like it just fine. So how's the display quality? Well, you can see we have 74% of Adobe RGB here. You can see our brightness test. Lenovo claims it's a 315-nit brightness display, which is very bright, and we in fact measured a little over 318.6. Black level is pretty good at 0.57. Contrast ratio, not bad, not wildly impressive. It's 560 to 1. And for our sRGB, you can see here 95% of sRGB. So that's about as good as you're going to get in terms of color gamut and support. So that's very important for those of you particularly who work with photo editing or video editing. You need to see the actual colors and not some blown out representation, which is what you get with lower gamut displays. So Lenovo did do a good job with color. So how much is this machine going to cost you? The base price is $1,150, and that's with a dual-core i7-5500U. We happen to have the 5600U, which is, well, just a small speed bump. Still dual-core. All ULV CPUs are just dual-core. Our machine as decked out here is around $2,400, so it can get expensive pretty quickly. For your base price, you're going to get that Core i7-5500U. You're going to get the full HD 1920 by 1080 display and a 500 gig hard drive. Instead, we have a 512 gig Samsung PM851 SSD, which is a fast SSD. We have the 3K display here. That's 2880 by 1620. By the way, we're running this at 200% scaling, which is the default. And we'll go back to the desktop. So you can see that. Obviously, here we have the touchscreen model. Now, if you want to go up just to 3K from, from the 1080p default, that's going to cost you $200 more. If you want to go up from the base model to the 3K with touch, that is $420 on top of the base price. You're looking at $1,500, $1,600 already. So those options can get pricey, but they're there. This is a workstation. Therefore, it is expandable. So inside, we'll slice in a picture of the guts for you in a minute. You have a two and a half inch drive bay, which we have a two and a half inch Samsung SSD in from the factory. Socketed Wi-Fi card, two RAM slots. So Lenovo says a maximum of 16 gigs. This is where it gets interesting though because some companies like Intelligent Memory have started actually making higher density RAM modules. So you can see here we have 32 gigs of RAM installed. A little bit's being used by the shared graphics memory there because it's running on Intel integrated graphics at the moment. So intelligent memory has 16 gig DIMMs. So you could bring this up to 32 gigs. Now, given that this is a ULV dual core i7, I, I, I'm not so sure that there's actually that great a need for it because when you're running multiple VMs, virtual machines, you also need to de dedicate cores or parts of cores to your virtual machines. You don't have that many cores here. You only have two. But just in case you need that much RAM, it's possible. So how about performance then? For those of you who need, well, a mobile workstation, you want some horsepower there. Here's our PC Mark 8 Home Accelerated Test that uses OpenCL. And you can see the score is 2842, and you can see the various sub-scores there. So that's a pretty decent score. 3D Mark 11, it scored P2462. That's the performance level is the 720p test there. W Prime Computed Pi in 16.5. 0 3 seconds, which is a little quicker than your average dual core i7 Broadwell CPU. Geekbench 3, 3251. Multi core 5953. So it's definitely tuned for speed. 
Only you can say whether you can make do with this instead of the usual quad-core 28-watt CPU like it's in the Lenovo W541 or the Dell Precision 3800 model. I think a lot of people will be able to get away with this, especially when you consider the fact that this guy weighs under 5 pounds without a touchscreen and 5.5 and pounds with a touchscreen, which compared to most mobile workstations that are just absolute beasts is just crazy. And battery life, Lenovo claims up to 12.5 hours with the internal front battery, the one you can't remove, and this bridge battery, with the larger bridge battery. Now, that might be a little optimistic, but honest to goodness, you should be able to get a full workday out of this, depending on what you're doing, eight hours, nine hours. Now, if you're doing a lot of serious rendering with this, obviously that's gonna use up more power versus doing something like Word, Excel, email, uh, online stuff. So you get the idea. If you're doing some some of the things this was actually meant to do, like rendering, well, you're probably going to see more like seven to eight hours, which is still very impressive for a machine that's unplugged doing very heavy lifting in terms of graphics. Now, just to give you an idea, between the W550S and a conventional 15-inch workstation, this is the Toshiba Tekra W50, which is no slouch. It's a very good machine. It does have a quad-core. It also has good dedicated graphics in there. You can see how much thicker it is. Nice. Lenovo, good job. Uh, but of course it is still a, you know, it's a big 15 inch workstation. As you can see here, this is the Retina MacBook 12 inch and you could fit two of these over here with just a little bit of overhang. There you go. Of course, can you use a 12 inch MacBook as a CAD workstation? I think not. And let's talk about performance a little bit more. Here you can see the SSD speed here. Very good, very respectable numbers, particularly the 4K number down here. Very impressive stuff. So even though it's using the, the SATA drive bay, it's getting some good speeds there. Now this does have an open M2 slot. I think Lenovo intends that for a caching drive in case you go with the HDD model. In terms of BIOS, usually you can get around it, but the, it's really designed not to use that as your main drive. But you might have luck with that. You might. One thing I will note is if you're wondering why touchscreens don't usually have matte displays, they do show fingerprints more. You can see them right there. And they're a bit harder to clean. I've been wiping this thing. You've got to use a little bit more pressure. You know, you can use a damp cloth, that sort of thing. It's not the end of the world, but it does show smudges more than the average camper. And one more benchmark while we're talking about that, an important one for this class of machine would be Cinebench R15 for the OpenGL test. 47.6 frames per second. Score 281 for the CPU. SpecView Perf, the 1920 by 1080 SolidWorks test, 42.1 frames per second. Now, how is that given the fact that the CPU is not, you know, super duper quad core high wattage? Let's see NVIDIA Quadro K620M dedicated graphics, which is a, a big improvement over the K610, by the way. Now, it's not the the highest end Quadro you can get, and Quadro is really the CAD business, really solid driver's version compared to GeForce Gaming. So the Quadro 620M has 2 gigs of DDR3 RAM. This is a Maxwell Generation graphics card, 28 nanometer for those of you who follow such things. It's obviously pretty capable giving, given our Cinebench numbers, and it's fine for gaming too. It's pretty close to the GeForce 840M in the world of gaming graphics card, integrated graphics card that is. So you can play modern games on medium settings, uh, some of them high, the ones that are better optimized like Bioshock Infinite, even maybe Tomb Raider you could get up to high. Something like Dragon Age Origins, no, not so much. You're going to be looking at low to medium settings there, but still, it's a nice experience given the big display, the high resolution. It looks nice. And speaking of how it looks, we're going to play video now. The speakers are only at 50%. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it is yoga time again, actually, with a Lenovo Yoga. This is the Yoga 3, 14-inch, and it does well. The so yoga there you go. It's actually not bad if you want to use it for multimedia. That, that's actually important for those of you who are going to use this for video editing. You really want to be able to hear your track without plugging in some headphones. Obviously, it's going to be fun for gaming, for watching movies. It's a pretty pleasant experience. Other standard features include 
dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac, and that is the Intel 7265, which is a good wireless card, which also is integrated Bluetooth 4.0. You can get 3G, 4G, LTE, WAN, otherwise known as a cellular wireless module, as well, another use for that M2 slot, and that adds $149 to the price, which for Lenovo isn't that bad. And lastly, for those of you who are wondering about the batteries, if you like that flat and svelte look, you can get a 3-cell rear battery, 23-watt-hour. There's also a 6-cell, 48-watt-hour battery, and obviously our 72-watt-hour 6-cell battery for the serious Energizer Bunny kind of experience, relatively speaking, for, again, a mobile workstation product. And that's really who this is for. Those of you who do moderate heavy tasks, but you need something for the road that was going to outlast most mobile workstations, which honestly aren't really designed to be used unplugged for long periods of time. Some of those, four hours, five hours maybe, and depending on what you're doing, going up to eight, nine, even ten hours with this is pretty darn impressive. Again, like I said, if you're doing serious video editing, if you're working in SolidWorks, you're going to get shorter run times, but still, compared to your average workstation, it lasts. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad W550S. It's available now. And if you're looking for a mobile workstation, you engineering types, you CAD types, and you're not doing models with thousands of parts where you really need that quad-core CPU, or if you're doing VMs but you're not doing too many virtual machines at once, then, then the, the dual-core ULB CPU in here can do the job for you with great battery life, too. At five to five and a half pounds, it's pretty darn portable. A decent sized footprint here, but you get that usual Lenovo build quality, so it's a pretty impressive lightweight mobile workstation. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit mobiletechreview.com for our full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.